Hey y'all. Okay, my name is Danielle McKinnon. I am an animal psychic or an animal communicator. I've been helping people for almost 20 years learn how to communicate intuitively with animals. I think in the past year, I've specifically helped more than 2,000 people communicate intuitively with animals through my school of animal communication. And today, we're going to talk about the number. Oh, I have it right here. We're going to talk about the number one way that. Um, animals use to give messages from the other side. So we're going to put this up. There it is. <laughs> awesome. All right. Animals do have the ability to give messages from the other side, which is awesome. It's not like when they cross over, you can't get back in touch with them. In fact, a lot of my work with animals and their humans is after the animal has crossed over, which is pretty cool. Um, it's actually some of my favorite work to do is help people understand that even though an animal has crossed over, they are still accessible. But animals know that we as humans don't often understand that or that our grief can be so big that we don't get it or we worry that we're wrong it's not true so animals spend a lot of time trying to get messages through the challenge is that once you're in grief if you're big in your grief you know grieving is a huge process that we have to go through when we lose one of our animals and if you're grieving in a big way it lowers your vibration it makes you feel sad of course and grieving is totally normal but if you're in that lower vibrational space what happens is it's very difficult to pick up the messages and here's why animals have mastered unconditional love so they're here all the time Humans have not mastered unconditional love as evidenced by everything that we're experiencing in our life, right? The only reason I wouldn't feel good about myself or I wouldn't believe in myself or I wouldn't think I was lovable is because I have not mastered unconditional love of myself and therefore of others. So if animals are here because they've mastered unconditional love and we are here because we haven't and then we're grieving, we're going to go down lower. We're going to feel, oh, it's going to, it's a little tougher. Now there's a bigger gap to connect to. There's a bigger gap for that animal to get a message through to that human. This is hard, right? If I'm sad, I'm going to miss the message. Um, Renee says, hello from California. Many animals are having a hard time due to the due to fires. Yeah, it's a really hard time right now. Um, I have done a video on what to do when you want to help animals in need. I would definitely suggest going back and watching that video because it's this is the perfect time to use what I said in that video. So when we're missing our pet, when we're missing that animal that has crossed over, our vibration is lower. And when our vibration is lower, and I teach this when I'm teaching animal communication as well, when our vibration is lower, it's harder to pick up the messages from our pets. So as you know, if you know anything about me, animal, uh, animal energy management is the way to go, right? Manage your energy. And I have plenty of videos and plenty of classes on that. But what do you do if you have done your energy management and you're still not getting the message? How, how, where do you know how to look? What are these messages? What happens? Here's the thing. If I can't catch the messages, or, um, I'm going to be bummed, right? I want to get the messages. If I'm desperately trying to get the messages from my animal on the other side, it's also harder. So what you do is you have to know where to look for the messages. And in my animals in the other side class, I'll go over all the messages that I know of. But for today, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the number one way that the animal will send the message from the other side. And it's actually in your dreams. You do not have to be psychic. You can actually pick up messages from your animals through your dreams. The animals have figured out, oh, she's sad. She's depressed. She's missing me, etc. But your guard is down. The attachment isn't there when you're asleep. So animals will visit you in their sleep. They show up and they'll do what's called a visitation. There's a difference between an animal giving you a message in a dream and having a dream about the animal. A lot of the time, you know you're having a dream about the animal because maybe the animal's in um, in an upset, in, in a worrisome situation, is lost, is not feeling okay. Those are not messages from your pet. Usually what those are is our subconscious playing out our feelings about our animal being crossed over. When an animal comes to visit you from the other side, they simply show up in your dream. They give you an awesome experience with them. It's But it's very usually like a very surreal kind of um, 
almost realistic but hyper hyper realistic experience like um during your dream you sat up in your bed and you pet your cat for like an hour or you felt like you and your cat had this verbal conversation with one another and and it's still there you you you're remembering the whole thing so and it's still there you're remembering the whole thing as if it just happened when you have that kind of weird feeling about the um the dream that's how you know it's a visitation you most people who have visitations to get the message from their animal they don't question it because they're like wow that was so neat that was so crazy wow and that in itself tells you when you have that feeling that in itself is what tells you hey this thing really happened. All right. I hope you enjoyed getting your number one message from your pet or the number one way of getting your message from your pet. And I will see you soon. Okay.